so nag change hairstyle si mom kay feeling na ko distracting ako mga distracting ako agtan anyway let's move on we will have extended communication so extended communication involves the use of electronic media and this is what we're using today hello electronic media so we have television we also have radio and then we have the television tele. and then audio or phone conferencing then skype calls and technological needs so people who are far apart like you and me can communicate through this video or through zoom or through messenger or through facebook and you can participate in this class and pass this subject because of the aid of extended uh, electronic communication extended or electronic communication. Diba? We already discussed how many forms according to modes. Ano yun? Modes. Visual, verbal, and nonverbal. According to context, you have your, you will already discuss intrapersonal and interpersonal. Now we have our extended communication or electronic communication. So, with the use of technology, if dili lang po lag ang imong internet, and if you're like Liza Soberano, you can actually transmit messages easier. So, it can be transmitted within seconds or minutes. And you can influence people's behavior, um, and they may be persuaded with the views, uh, with what they view. So, I hope, no, every time you view mo sa ako ang YouTube channel, Naramoy ma learn. I hope you're learning something. And I hope that your readings are taking life. I'm currently reviewing my food. So, kalitra po kunin yung way. Diba? So, let's maximize our internet connection. Although, hello sa mga students na wala kay sakto internet connection. Laban lang ta. Let's pray for each other. And I do hope that you will still use. You will still use your resources wisely. Diba? And that God will bless you so much in terms of your education. For those of you who are already blessed with a good internet connection, nindot pagito gadgets, I hope you will have hearts that are diligent in order to use your blessings also wisely. So, para wala gansi na tung tanan, diba? So that we can bless our parents. Nuwe ba itong ginikan at karong panahuna? Diba? Laban ng parents, we will honor you with whatever we have produced this semester. Okay. Okay na ito itong extended communication, diba? So, extended communication is being facilitated by electronic means. Videos, phone conferences, text messages, Facebook groups, Google classrooms. Pwede tanan. Okay? Then we also have organizational communication, although I'm not going to talk a lot about that. But when you say organization, it comprises of individuals who work for the same company or who work for, who work, ba? Oh, work for the same company. Then you have your formal structure, okay? So when formal structure and then you have your informal structure. Now, when you say formal structure, it's just communication that's already designated between positions. So, for example, context ni siya sa criminology. Hello to my criminology students. If you are watching, hello, because you're going to be under a rank and file. Not rank and file. You're going to be under a ranking system. So, for example, PO1 na ka. You're already a PO1. Of course, when you are going to communicate with a senior officer, you are not going to chat them or text them in an informal manner. You have to observe formality. Here in the Philippines, let's talk about formality before we go into more complicated discussions. Um, Filipinos, we, we give good respect to our elders. So, you have to be careful how with those arguments you see on Facebook. Ako, ginakuha na ako. I'm trying to, to not reinforce. I'm trying to give you a more 
not saying I'm not saying I'm self righteous, but you have to reconsider what you see on Facebook because that's not helpful all the time. Now, have you heard the word okay, okay, boomer? You, you throw that to a person who is already old. Okay, boomer. And that's very disrespectful. Okay, not just through the eyes of a Filipino, but generally it's very disrespectful. You can actually argue respectfully, but to just demean somebody because of their age, because of their seniority, something that's very disrespectful. Now, Let's talk about the seniority here in the Philippines. We really observe that. We have ate and we have kuya. We have mano and manan. We have tito, we have tita, we have auntie. Okay? But we, we really observe older and younger. Okay? And ma, sir, miss, mister. Okay? We try to enforce these standards we're not the type we're not like the americans I'm sorry people from america who are going to view this but americans use first name basis and for me it's kind of weird as an asian i can say that oh without the proper honorific terms it sounds disrespectful this is the same with your organizational communication now when you begin working soon Regardless of your position, for me, it's very respectful to use ma'am and sir. Okay, there's a running joke about lawyers. Okay, for those of you whose parents are lawyers, oh my God, please do not. <laughs> and some lawyers actually want to be called attorney because it's a hard-earned thing. Attorney, or for those who are engineers, engineer, or doctors, doctor. They want to hear those honorific things, but... What if you don't have an idea of who they are and what honorifics they're carrying? So in an organization, to play it safe, you have to give everybody the respect due for everyone. Meaning, you treat everyone in that organization with respect, as it should be. Ma'am or sir, whether this person is the same level as you are, you call them ma'am or sir. If they're on the top part, you call them ma'am or sir or their preferred honorifics. So it's very important that um, in an organization, you should know how to communicate formally, not just by writing, because that's kind, not kind of easy, but that's something you can edit, but in the way you speak. You cannot just go to your boss and, yo, boss, <laughs> I'm have my salary raise right now because, you know, I did a popping job of how to do these things and I just did this and that. You can't do that. You can't be, you can't be a rapper in front of your boss unless it's a Christmas party. But what I'm trying to say is that you have to communicate with honor and honor. You have to communicate with respect and you have to be very efficient in how you communicate with them. Unless, of course, your boss is a parent. I don't know how your dynamics are, but if that person is unrelated to you and he or she is your boss or your immediate supervisor, then you have to be very cordial. That's how it should be. Okay? So that's your formal. And then we also have informal. How you speak with your co-workers. Now, your co-workers are going to be like your family. So there are levels in how you speak because it's not all the time that you're going to be all uptight with each other. Sometimes you have to be free in order for those ideas to just flow especially in the time of the pandemic you have to maximize every communication that's within you so that you and your co-workers would create solutions that are harmonious with each other for example when i told my co-workers that i'd be having a youtube channel i didn't do it in a formal way like i presented everything via powerpoint i just did it informally and presented it to them and then they just said, hey, yeah, that's a cool idea. Maybe one day we're going to adopt that one. So that's how it is. That's organizational communication. We are going to learn more about that in our next lessons because that's going to be something that's in-depth. Then we also have intercultural communication. So it's a communication between or among different people of di different languages, religion, ethnic, social, and professional backgrounds. And this is quite exciting. 
because this has been a source of a lot of conflict in the international sphere. Okay, have you, I know you have already read something about hashtag cancel Korea. That rings a bell with you. Hashtag cancel Korea. For me, it's just a miscommunication between the two cultures. I am not pro-Korea and I'm not anti-Philippines. Personally, I just want peace for all nations because of the thing that we're going through through this 2020. We don't need any more drama, regardless of who started the fire. Yeah, the, between cultures, we have to understand and give each other respect. Each culture should be respected. Diba? So we're going to talk more about that because that's something that you should also be learning because... Da -da -da -da. The DepEd, DepEd ba? Shed has actually designed purposive communication as a way for you students to become globally competitive citizens, regardless if you go abroad or not. And I want you for this class to become globally competitive. For me, it's not about winning tournaments or being amazing in the global, at global atmosphere. Global atmosphere, meaning that you would win awards and be super big or, you know, bring honor to this country. But I would want to see you and the future of this nation to be respectful, to be pro-peace, to be diplomatic, and to be, yeah, to be just awesome. So that ends my lesson, my three lessons, and I do hope that you have enjoyed these videos. Thank you so much for watching and we will have an activity as soon as I post your readings. So thank you very much. Have a good day.